It's time for Q&A in the Kitchen. It's a podcast and YouTube series where tattoo artists in piercer talk about some of the more common questions that those that collect tattoos in piercings may have. Brought to you in part by Skin Kitchen Tattoo and the Axiom Body Piercing Studio. Today, of course, we've got the usual crew, the Motley crew, the Bonnie crew, the uh, the crew of, chef, of chefs. Uh, to my right, your left, is Jimmy Two Cheeks St. John, tattoo artist here at the Skin Kitchen. Next to him is Captain Jack Lowe, tattoo artist and owner of the Skin Kitchen Tattoo. And myself, Davo, the, uh, I guess I'm the piercer of the body and the owner of the Axiom Body Piercing Studio. What we're going to talk about today is what should you bring? How should you prepare for a consultation uh, to getting a piercing or a tattoo? What exactly does that entail? And kind of a little bit about what leads up to that tattoo appointment or piercing appointment. And maybe some hints on how to prepare for that. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I think it, this would be helpful to let people know kind of what is going to help us. So um, what we do here is... If, uh, you you call up and you'll talk to uh, Jess more than likely our uh, manager slash do everything but tattoo person, <laughs> and um, <laughs> and she uh, she'll talk to you briefly about kind of you know what you wanting and uh, how big you know kind of give her uh, an idea of what you're after and if she determines that it would be beneficial for you to have a one on one meeting with one of the artists, uh, she'll set you up with it. She'll make an appointment. Yep. And uh, when you come in, at least for me, when my clients come in and uh, they have some sort of reference, whether that be some artwork that they grabbed, just some actual photos or out of a book or something, um, and uh, maybe pictures of other people's tattoos, um, whether that's to show me placement or maybe a style of how it was done, and uh, give me the elements of what they're wanting. Let me know where it's going and how it's done. So that means, you know, do you want it black and gray? Do you want it f kind of a photorealistic, re really thin or no lined? Do you want it more bold and in your face, you know, kind of things? So these are things as a client that you would want to think about. Um, and that's the thing. And if you have questions about, well, you know, what's better or does it, you know, why does it matter? Then, you know, that's a great time to talk. But right. the more kind of prepared you are and sure you are of what you want, the better it is on our end. Absolutely. Um, because we can help guide you if with your idea and your placement. We can uh, help you with, you know, adjusting and arranging the stuff that's there and how to make it fit and flow good. Um, but you have to know what you want first. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so it usually doesn't take too long. Like my, a lot of my consults are like f five minutes, man. Yeah. They're quick, you know, uh, is, and I just have the best clients in the whole freaking world, man. I swear there's, I can't remember a consult. They're always awesome. Yeah. You know, they just have the, the coolest ideas that I'm just yeah. totally stoked to do. So, um, but there, every now and then you'll get that person that um, is kind of doing a pre consult, I'd say. Yeah. I had one of the very rare times that's happened um, a couple weeks ago. A guy came in and he more just kind of had questions about the process, um, wanted to kind of find out how long it would take, what it would, you know, how it would just happen, you know, uh, how the, you know, what's the process of actually getting it done, multiple sessions, how long are the sessions, all that stuff. And that's cool, too. Yeah. Uh, but I guess I was going to think, you know, you know, we don't mind doing that at all. No. We love, you know, doing the consult. But I was thinking, you know, if it is kind of that pre-consult thing, I think uh, referring to our other videos yeah. could answer a lot of questions. Or, or our website now that the pandemic's subsided somewhat mm -hmm. stopping by and visiting yeah exactly yeah. uh you can always stop in and and like i said talk to jess and if you have a couple questions uh you know how long would something like this take what would it you know whatever uh, a lot of times she can just take that back and we can take a look at it yep. you know while we're tattooing quick uh and give you a good idea that way too but um uh 
just be have you can never have too much reference i always nope. say you know uh just you know for instance if you want a dragon and you want it from your wrist up to your shoulder um what kind of dragon medieval uh, or you animal? know yeah there's all kinds of you know people when you say dragon <laughs> they all have a sli- they all have a different picture in their right. head so if you can show me oh man i love the, the way the scales are done on this dragon and the wings on this one are super cool i love the the way the head is on this one yeah cool man yeah. that's great and if you don't care that's great too yeah you know if you really don't care right you know what i mean <laughs> Uh, usually that can mean, well, I, I don't know nothing. I, I can't really think of what I want, but it's, I'm going to be picky about it and I hope, and I hope you're just going to nail it. You know what I mean? (laughs) And and when, and that situation comes up, do you feel like you're on a game show? Um, You know what I'm talking about? It's like, I'm going to give you two random ideas and then you go draw. And then I'm going to show up at your appointment well, and yeah. nitpick no, what you did. No, because if you do the consultation properly, there you've already covered all that. Right? So that's the and that's where it falls on us to ask the right questions, you know. And after doing it for a long time, you get better, better, better. Right. And there's less frustration and less missed marks that mm-hmm. you have to redraw or move things around. Um, so. If 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 the artist is doing their job and asking the right quest questions of you, and finding out what they need to know, and you're able to uh, verbalize or show what you want real clear, yeah, it's gonna go super yeah. smooth, way easy. But you've run into like I, I'm sure those people that just can't communicate very well, like use the right. I've had some customers come in, and I felt I thought. Initially, they were super prepared. They had made a sketch. They had a bunch of reference and had note like on their drawing had put little notes of everything they wanted included. Mm -hmm. I'm like, awesome. So I did the drawing. And then, you know, they come in and go, well, wow, that's amazing. Well, I really didn't. I didn't want this kind of that. I said I wanted a rose, but I didn't want that kind of rose. I wanted this kind of rose. Okay. Or, you know what I mean? Little, little stuff, which is fine to change some little stuff like that. But like, don't give but a whole could, lot of broad. But that can fall back on you. It can. You could have asked. Well, uh, what are you thinking? What kind of rose? Do you want like right. a big bloomed one? You want just kind of a bud? What do you think? Well, you know, like I right. said, even some customers, you know, what kind of roses do you want? Oh, I want a wreath of roses. Okay, so I drew a multiple amount of roses right. in it. Right. And then it was, you know, well, is that petal like? Is it too open <laughs> on that one petal on this? Side? Like, there's just some people, you know, that just can't re- release grasp of not having control of that. Yeah, well, yeah, they're unsure, they're nervous, and, you know, they're they're so hung up on this is going to be there forever, and oh my God, it's got to be just the most absolute perfect thing. Yeah. Yeah, those people can be tricky to work with. So what I would suggest is a process. The first thing you need to ask yourself, do I want to get a tattoo? Once you've answered that question, or a piercing, same goes the same way. Next thing is, where do I want it? Mm -hmm. Figure that out. Then once you've gotten that, what do I want there? What is that design? Then, what is an artist that I actually trust to do this well? And once you make that decision that you trust this person, you have to trust them. You got to trust them. (laughs) If you don't trust them, you got to cancel the appointment and go somewhere else. It's gonna. It it is going to affect the tattoo a lot. Um, Yeah. You know, the less sure the artist is of what you want the more stressful and harder it is for us to give you what you want, Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, And I understand a lot of times you don't know what you want, but you have to. (laughs) Or you have to be willing to leave it to the artist and realize, you know, that's not something I would have chosen, you know, or or thought of, but it looks great. You know, it looks, it's cool. And I didn't really know what I wanted. I left it to the professional you know, artist to do right. what he thought or she thought to do the best, and they're okay with it, yeah. and almost kind of like that part of it. That oh, they chose that. You right. know, they took part in this and chose exactly. something it's too. So, effort. you know, uh, but the more just knowing what you want and coming with reference. Even you know, I love getting little sketches. Uh, some artists maybe they don't, but I love getting the little uh, napkin sketches. You know, just to kind of show me kind of placement. It 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 lets me get into their head a little bit mm-hmm. and kind of look through their mind's eye a little bit. Even if it's just uh, super scratchy, just 
looking at the way things are arranged or how they're you know like how the body it it's like of a person how the body's sitting you know whether their an- their hands are open whether they're yeah. closed you know uh, even like praying hands are they like this are they like that kind of just having those basic key markers yeah. is going to make it a lot easier for you guys to create a design and know what what direction to go yeah Absolutely. like if someone comes in and says I want a fifty six <laughs> Chevy pickup truck and I want it right here on my arm well not only Okay, let's just say he he wants it realistic, photorealistic. Yeah. Okay, what angle of out of the trillions of angles that you could take a photo <laughs> of that truck? Do you want it in? Right. Or or do you even want it like that? Do you want it more cartoony? Do you want it more Ed Daddy? You know, Big Daddy Roth style. Yeah. You know, there's so right. so that's yeah. why when you show me a reference that tells that me that right. jumped out to you of something that appeals to you, and then I can look at that and go, oh, that's like five round you know pretty saturated color pretty straightforward kind of color bomby street or all the pictures i'm seeing are more thin line black and gray softer realistic kind of thing right so when he's talking about this pickup truck he's seeing it one way but i can't see how he's seeing it so the only way i can see it is by you showing me things that are close or just like you're giving me the information or showing me a reference so keep that in mind that you know the artist can't look and see exactly the image that you're seeing and some people don't have an exact image they just want you to take these uh an eagle a, a a soccer ball and a you know a 56 ford and make some out of and, it. and and make it cool. Yeah, I almost want to Which do a show fun. now. <laughs> you almost <laughs> what? I almost want to do a show now where I just come in and have like somebody randomly come in and say four things, and then you guys have to come up with a tattoo design. That's what we do for a living. I yeah, know, but that'd that. be entertaining. <laughs> like just, do it, you know, and make it fun. You know, like yeah, like pull, um, a pirate ship in a. Uh, I don't know, a a box of fruit. Well, you know, there's a, there's an exercise that artists use a lot. And, uh, a lot of times we'll, you'll get together with other people and you'll sketch and draw and stuff. And what you'll do is you'll have everybody fill, like give them 10 slips of paper and just write nouns on it, you know, just, you know, car, pig, bros, knife, whatever. And, you put them in a hat, mix it up, and then you reach in and grab three, and that's your composition. That's what mm-hmm. you have for your composition to put it together. And so, yeah, if you did that and then had a time limit and then compared, like, what each person saw and how they saw fun. it, yeah. that, would, that might be interesting. Maybe we'll do a special. Ooh, Maybe. that's a good idea. Maybe. Yeah, that'd be fun to get uh, all three of uh, us together and and do something like that. It could be really interesting, yeah. and it'd be really pretty easy with the iPads as well. Yep. You could yeah. even have them on screen. You yeah. Watch them draw. Yeah, that could um, be cool. Yeah, and, and the, the I don't know how to specify the, the, the importance of having reference material, and it's easy. We all have the perfect machine to do it with in our mm-hmm. pocket. You just basically make a folder on your phone, and you save every time you see something that reminds you of it or something that's in that direction. Right. You save it to that folder, and then you look through it, and you go, okay, well, you know, here's my 56 Chevy. That I don't really like that one. So you delete that one. Mm-hmm. You keep moving until you find that one or those couple things, and then you bring it to the artist, and the artist kind of melds them together and creates the new art. Exactly. Yeah. I'll tell people to, you know, basically exactly do that. Yeah, it's you your know, dream book, basically. Just, you mm-hmm. know, and, and some people don't know, uh, that Google or a lot of the search engines, they'll have an image specific search. So you can yeah. type in rows and just hit images. It's not going to search websites. It's going to look at the images on those mm-hmm. websites and just pull the images. And the best part about Google, I don't know about the other uh, the other web browsers or search engines, but Google, once you get into that sub, like you do rows, then you'll it'll pull up another thing and then there'll be sub subcategories sections. like drawn Red rows, rows and green rows, blue rows, black rows, drawn rows. Yeah. So exactly. it gives you a lot of different things to look at and kind mm. of narrow it down even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So say you do want a rose and you just know you want a rose because your grandma really liked them. So it was rose. So, you know, you really don't even really know how you want it or really you just know you want a rose. Yeah. Well, that's the great thing is you can jump on and you can look through all these images. And what I tell people is. Even if it's not what you want, if it appeals to you, save it. if you see it and you open it and you just like it, save it. Yeah. Because that helps me look at that and go, okay, that appealed to them. Yeah. And it will be a style, right? right? So the more that you can do that for me and show me, and sometimes they're very conflicting, but that's okay because I can ask you, what is it about this? Is it the line weight? No, no, no. I just like the eye on the thing. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You're trying to see what captivates. And that about and that, that clicks me in a little mm-hmm. more focus and what they're, what they're wanting. looking for. So uh, 
don't think that you're over inundating us or me or whatever with all those little nuts and bolts because if they if they if those specifics do need to be a part of your tattoo for you to truly love it let me know yeah and if you don't you which you know a lot of people they just like you to have fun with it and want you to stretch your wings and come up with something cool uh which is is great too but uh it's a lot less stress absolutely uh, if we know exactly what you want and we're nailing it and one thing I do need to, and I was going to bring this up earlier with the consultation, is if you get towards the end of the consultation and you and the artist have not really met in a way that you think that you should to where you can trust them to do this, usually most places don't schedule an appointment until after the consultation. No. Right. Oh, yeah. And it's easy for you to go, you know what, I really do need to just kind of step back and kind of think about this a little bit more. Absolutely. Yeah, um, no you know, can I can I keep your card and I'll call you in six months and we'll have another consultation and try to Absolutely. figure out like, maybe oh, I sure. can find what I'm looking for by then. Right. And that's much better than showing up the day of the appointment nitpicking the uh the what the artist has came up with based on what you told them and them stressing and trying to figure out how to fix this thing when they have a limited amount of time that they've scheduled to work with you and the reason we scheduled the consultation was to avoid all of that exactly so you're exactly right dave if you're not 100 percent ready to pull that trigger uh then wait yeah, you right. Know. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. The I, problem with being apprehensive about it when you come in is if, whether you didn't share enough information or you've seen some other stuff since the consult that's changed your your vision, your vision, or whatever it is. When you start like having all these questions about what we created off of what we felt we based off of your idea that you gave us, we're starting to like lose a little bit of confidence. Is like, do you really want this? Is this really something you really wanted? Is this how you wanted it? Like, you know, did were you were you uh, did you mischoose? Yeah. You know what I mean? Did you did you change your mind or like you know? Yeah, it, it starts getting less fun, and yeah. you, and it's harder to put all your energy behind it because, well, I did that last time. I came up with something I was really uh, proud of and thought it really nailed it, and they went, uh, "Yeah, that's cool." But now I want, and right. you're like, "Okay, so if I do that again, you know, and put all this energy in it for you just to." almost literally throw it in the garbage well yeah i'm probably not going to put as much because i'm going to go okay well now what do you want you know yeah so you know right. know what which, you want makes you think, as much as you can yeah and it has to get to a point where and i'm sorry but this is the truth of the matter not every artist and client is the perfect match oh no. absolutely not and it absolutely might come not. down to that yeah and it yeah. has nothing to do with anybody's ability or you know difficulties or what have you it just yeah. for yeah. one reason or another it just doesn't gel it just their, doesn't work their points of view and the way they see the finished product just aren't aren't meshing yeah. and yeah. it doesn't make either one of them you know oh. wrong uh you know everybody has uh the way they like things or the way they do things or the way they think things are right or wrong. And uh, that doesn't mean that someone down the road isn't, wouldn't be willing to do it or that can uh, convey the reasons that you shouldn't do it, do it uh, to you better than the first guy. Exactly. So, you know, just because one artist says, well, no, you can only get it this way because of X, Y, Z. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's true for every other artist. So, right. you know, but that's where research comes down. That's where yep. look, look at the style that they're prolific in and, and uh, all that and get to know your artist as well as you can before you wait sometimes a couple months to come in, you know, right. to talk to them about your idea. And from the piercing standpoint with consultations, it's a little different. Um, so I'm going to cover that quick, and then I think we should move on to what you guys do between the consultation and when the appointment actually happens. <laughs> the behind-the-scenes part. Ooh. Piercing t uh, consultations, there's kind of two types. There's the type that comes in that somebody already has an idea of exactly what they want. Then there's the type where somebody comes in and goes, I want a piercing. I don't know what I want. Um, I struggle with the latter. I'll admit it. It's just the way I am. Um, because me, it's it's always, I don't know. We've talked about this in the past. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do when you come in and you say, I want blah, blah, blah piercing is I'm going to give you all the information I can. That I think you can make an educated decision on whether or not this piercing is right for you. And I'm going to tell you about aftercare risks, anything that may go wrong, anything that can go wrong, anything that may affect it, or anything that's going to affect your lifestyle for the next whatever time it's going to take to heal. Then I'm going to sit there and I'm going to go, so do you still want it? Mm. And then we'll go pick out jewelry. The other thing, and we were talking about this earlier, is kind of this misconception that, you know, if you come in with a photo of a piercing, especially ear piercings, 
and it's like, I want that. Well, a lot of things change the look of a piercing. It's not only just the piercing itself, which is the physical part that is part of you. It's the jewelry. And sometimes the jewelry can greatly change how the piercing looks. And it, I've been struggling with and I've been trying to increase that I bring that up in the consultation. And it's something you want to think about. Because, like, for example, if you do a septum piercing with a curved bar or circular barbell, it's going to look different than it does if you put a little tiny clicker in there or a little tiny ring. It's going to change the look of it. It's going to change the way it fits into your face. The same thing with ear piercings. If you go from, like, a really long stud to a very short stud with a totally different end on it, it's going to look different than it did initially. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you always have to consider all these things. And I always have a, a habit that if I think the person's on the fence or they're like, they bring up like, we're going on vacation in two weeks. And, you know, and this is the most common one is the mom brings in who uh, the kid and the kid's like, oh, no, I'm not going to go swimming while I'm on vacation. And I'm just like, okay, you guys sit here, talk for 10 minutes. I'll come back. Because my opinion is I would much rather have you not come back or come out much later when you don't have to deal with all that. Yeah, it's usually way better to wait. And that, that happens to us, too, where there's vacations that are coming up and all that. And um, typically, clients are, are, are good at waiting, you know, yeah. going, you know what? Yeah. You know, they don't want to babysit a tattoo while they're on vacation and things like that. Um, but uh, in, in your situation... Uh, that's probably the smartest thing to do, especially if, you know, they've got a, a, a parent or something there uh, to lay some sense on them. And then, yeah. <laughs> you know. And sometimes it's friends, sometimes it's relatives, you know, what have you. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just, uh, you know, and there's no reason when you go in to get something done, time and time again, I've had people come in and I'll tell them all this stuff and they're like, it's like you're trying to talk me out of it. It's like, no, I'm not. I'm making sure that you are making the right decision. Yeah. Because that's going to make my job easier. Yeah, I shouldn't, like, if, <laughs> if, if you, I shouldn't be able to, you know, and you're, you're not, you're not convincing them to get tattooed. That's not what this no. process is. I'm telling you that there are risks. You and are taking a risk in what you're about to do. And I think a lot of people think that a consultation is supposed to be the sales program. And it is. It is not. It no. is not at all. It's it to is. see if we match and if I can achieve the Vision thing that you're looking yeah. for. It's a date, kids. It's, it, it, it's always a date. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's <coughs> part of the... That's part exactly the right. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not... I'm not here to try to talk you into something that's going to change your life. No. Okay, that, no way. So, yeah, in a way, you could look at it as I am kind of, I guess, talking, trying to talk you out of it. I'm not trying to talk you out of it, but I need to share with you the risks uh -huh. and th th that you're taking because there are. You know, it's a it's a bigger deal. I'm not here going, man, this this green box is so cool you should buy two. It's not, that's not going to change your life. I'm just yeah. looking to grab some money out of your pocket, right? Yeah. But what we do it's a you know it's it's not that and the other right. thing is to keep your expectations where they where they're exactly. realistic opposed to where a lot of people have their expectations yeah yeah and that again takes the stress off of the artist uh, because okay i've been very honest with what they can you know expect and what can be done what the risks are cool they're good with it yeah cool all right yep. as long as you know that stuff i'm good with it Let's too proceed. right because i'm not here just to get something out of your pocket or just to do anything else, I want to please you in the business I do. Yeah. Exactly. It, you know, and the money is like a cool bonus because I've got bills to pay so I can do this. And I'll admit, there are times, not often, but people will call me up and go, well, this one's a little bit off and I'm not really happy with the placement on this piercing. My automatic response Ten, you know, 20 years ago, I would have argued with him for 25 minutes about, blah, you know, it's this way and this way and this is why it's this way. I've learned at this point in my career that it's like, you know what? If you're not happy with it, take it out. I want you to be satisfied with it. Come back in a month, we'll redo it for free. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, yep. it's like yeah. this. We want this to be a collaborative effort, yeah. but our skills right. are just to a certain level. And no, when no, I mark yeah. something or you guys show somebody a drawing, mm -hmm. There's not much we can do beyond that, <clears throat> right? And and you know, and I'm not, and I'm, and I'm sure when you do uh, get these occasional calls or people like that, um, they're not blaming you. No. You know, they probably, you know, after they got relaxed or they took off those jeans they were wearing for a long time, where they're all squunched up, and now they, it's been a couple of days, and they've 
you know, eating some Taco Bell and retaining <laughs> a little more water yeah, you know, or whatever it is, you know, they're really looking at it. And probably eight times out of 10, it's one of their friends. Exactly. Going, that's, that's crooked. Or a Not random that. stranger <laughs> at the food court at the mall. Yeah, just that hater, you know, yep. that yeah. wants to show that they're better or know more, you know, or that they notice something that bugs them because they're so elite, yes. you know, that, oh, that's not right. Nah, I know, I know everything about that. And so that's not right, you know. Yeah. And then that puts the doubt in there. So, yeah, and on the other anyway. end of it with this whole like <laughs> consultation, you know, I want you to curate my ear or whatever thing. With that, it, I'm, I'm sorry who the peer, I don't know who came up with the concept that everybody, peer, every peer so should be able to do this. You should at least have a base of what some of the piercings are that you're interested in. Yeah, totally. When you come in. Um, otherwise, I I jokingly always, like the few times I came across, I'm like, earlobe piercings. Yeah, I think you'd look great with two or three earlobe piercings. And people like kind of look at me and they don't know if I'm joking or not. Yeah. But it's kind of like, uh, you know, you can do any tattoo you want. Just I just want to be tattooed. It's like, okay, yeah. big black square. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a rectangle. And then next to it, a triangle. Is that fine with you? You know, not saying those are easy to do, but what I'm getting at is... Yes, you guys have you to like give some, us some direction. Input. Yeah, yeah, you have to have some kind of direction. And that and that might not be every artist. No, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of artists out there that you know will just go in, do what they want it to do, and the client is super purely happy with it and everything else. Um, but me, most of the time, or practically every time, I at least want to know a overall genre. Yeah. Or, you know, is are, are you a skull and yeah. bones and knives and swords and guts kind of person? Or, you know, are you a more cartoony kind of per? You know, give me at least a, you a, know, a, a heading. Your personality. Right. Yeah. Or how you want to be perceived in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a big arm full of dicks. Because there's no, I mm -hmm. cannot be 100% happy with a tattoo if you don't like it. Yeah. Right. You know, I want to give you something that you you dig, yeah. and that's part of the enjoyment for me because either way, I get to tattoo. Right. Yeah. So that that box is checked. You know, the other exactly. piece <laughs> of that percentage is you freaking loving it so much right. you can barely you know stand it. Yeah, so. exactly. But, yeah. So okay, so we set up the appointment because that's the next stage, and in most cases, if you're going to set up an appointment, you're going to have to put down a deposit. Yep. And I don't know why this is confusing to people. And it's the same thing with piercings. If you set up an appointment, I usually ask for an, a deposit. Yes, it goes towards the cost of the tattoo or piercing. Yeah. I don't know why I have to answer that over and over again, but yes, it does. Yeah. That is the hold your spot. Yep. That's not some magical number that any of us want to make because you don't show up and we get no. to work for, we make that for nothing. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is when you start to look down on, you look at the facts, the amount of money that they that you put out for your deposit is minimal by comparison. If motiv if our main motivation is monetary, it doesn't compare to what we'd make if you showed up. Right. So please, you know, don't look at it that way. It's that, not trying to scam you out of anything. We just need you to hold that time. And, and you have it. to understand in this industry that it's a lot easier for someone to go, yeah, I'll do this in a week. And instead of, you know, because they've got they've got time to back out. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, they might be all super sure, but then they've had a week to worry about it or right. get all nervous about it and go, you know what? I'm not going to go. And then we've then we're sitting here not doing anything. So it's just a way right. to make 100 percent prove to us that you are serious about doing it and you really are going to be here. And I didn't in the you know, when I first started out, I never took deposits, you know, but. I realized you have to. Yeah. I it, didn't until recently, until the pandemic, when it got right. to a point and I'd call these people up and they'd go, well, I found a place I could get into sooner. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me, right? Right. You, you, basically what you've done is you kept three other people from getting pierced today because you set up these appointments for your friends and you uh -huh. and then went somewhere else. Right. It's not that I'm mad that you didn't show up. I'm mad that I had to blow off three other people yeah. Yeah. who deserve to be pierced because they would have been here. Right. And the money you're making from that deposit is nowhere, it's no, not, no. it's nowhere near what you could have made. But no. uh, yeah, and that's kind of the risk that you take in a business, but that's why we charge deposit to minimize exactly. that risk. Right. Sadly, we have to make money to keep the lights on. Yeah. yeah. So you come in, you talk to us, you set up the appointment, and depending on the complexity of your design and everything else, we might spend an hour on it or we might spend 20 hours on it. Right. You know, yeah, there's a lot of work afterwards. Once you leave, uh, you come in and you want to do uh, mythic, a, a sleeve of mythic gods 
and you know myths and creatures and all that cool I've got all the guys you want in it, all your reference. You want Medusa, you want Zeus, you want you know Hades, you want this, you want that. And I take 20 hours or more to draw that. You know, every day after I finish work, I draw from 8:30, 9 o'clock until 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. You know, for two or three weeks, and then you go, all right. Well, I really want a Donald Duck sleeve now. <laughs> well, yeah. okay. okay. Or if you or if you blow it off and don't show up, like. Once again, I'm not getting paid anything near the work you've put in or anything like that yeah. or try to make money off of you. But you saying, hey, I'm serious. I want that sleeve about mythological you know, beings. Uh, okay, we're, that's going to take this long to tattoo it. Okay, well, that, how long is that you know, appointment going to be? The deposit on it, let's say it's $100, $150 or whatever. That $150 does not pay for oh, yeah, no three or four wrong. weeks after work every day of drawing on something and getting something developed and created for someone mm -hmm. for them just to go oh i forgot i went swimming that day or i decided to go eat cookies or you know whatever yeah, yeah. well and it's a lot yeah. like you know you don't really realize how much work it is to be in a band until you're in one oh, man. you know you see a band up on stage for 30 minutes and you think oh that must be you know great and there's that's easy but man the hours and hours and hours and yeah, hours and days and days and days they spend you know. rehearsing and moving their equipment buying equi re equipment repairing equipment moving all their equipment trying to get another drummer because drummers suck just kidding <laughs> But, you know, uh, it, it's, it's exactly like that. You're just seeing a tiny little right. snip of, of the overall. Piece. You're seeing the tip of the iceberg of what it went through to get to the tip of right. the iceberg. Yeah, so, there's a lot more to it. A couple yeah. things, and it kind of points out the difference between piercing and tattooing. Piercing, there's usually a flat fee. That's, you, there might be some jewelry right. options, but that's right. it. Tattooing, you guys usually quote them a basic like maximum hour time. Mm -hmm. We yeah, we I've try to estimate try the to. hours as close as we can. Yep, and usually I've never seen an experience or experience, and maybe I'm wrong with this, where something is ran over those hours. Usually. It does happen. It, it does occasionally, occasionally not very often. Yeah, but but yeah. So they it's budgeted out, and I think another thing when people are mis a lot of people maybe don't understand is if you're doing an extremely large piece, it's going to be done in sections. It isn't done in one big giant thing. You yeah. might do seven hours, but seven hours of it, depending on the style, seven hours could be like from here to here. Yeah, it might like not literally be a inch. lot. Right. If you you're know, doing a back piece, like you know, you're not you're not going to have a back piece that looks anything close to resembling a finished back piece at the end of like seven hours when it's a 40 hour back piece right yeah no. yeah, yeah it's just you know it's not feasible yeah it's something that you it's a process it's absolutely you know, you know just a and another thing to mention in the consultation is if you are in a budget and you just have this much money to spend on the tattoo is go hey can we break this up into like 12 settings over yeah. six months and the yeah. artist is going to go yeah sure totally. it's I, i'll have to plan it out but that works for me if it works yeah, for you. Yeah, I'll be happy to work with you, whatever yeah. you need to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a, people, a lot of people, it's like they hear seven hours, and it's just like, it's like they think it's a car repair. Like, at the end of it, they have to pay for all of it, or if they have to pay for it all right. for us. No, you all can break it up. Yeah. 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 And, you know, with something like you were talking about going over, uh, some instances that will happen, like you have a customer comes in, I want a portrait of my horse on my forearm, I want about this big, blah, blah, blah. They get there, and they're like, man, that drawing you did, is it's beautiful. You know, I, I'd really like to get that a bit bigger if we could make it fit and look, you know. So you blow it up and all this other stuff. Well, you know, oh, well, when you said you're going to do this, it's going to take like six hours. Well, we doubled the size of it, which doubles the amount of time. And now it's going to take me six or seven, eight hours instead of the four or five or whatever, you know, that we started with. And yeah. you got to be open to that, too. Like when you make changes to art. Yeah, it's just like a house. It extends repair. the time. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and it can seem like uh, just a not a big change, but that doesn't mean that it can add even hours to the tattoo. The difference is black and gray in color. Yeah. Right. I can do uh, a tattoo this size and this, you know, this way in black and gray in this amount of time. If I had to do it in full saturation color and like it's almost doubled the time and like you get done with the outline and the shade and they're like well you know it shouldn't take too much longer now and i'm like we're just getting ready to start <laughs> up the mountain now yeah yeah, yeah. we gotta we go just all got the over built. yeah we gotta go over all of that stuff we've already tattooed like three four more times saturating all these different colors and mixing and you know mm -hmm. it's a heavy duty process man like you're in for the long ride and i like to make them aware of that when we're in the consult yeah so you're aware of what you can get into into you know do you want to go on a day cruise or do you want to go on across like inter transcontinental trip you know, yeah, what right. is it you're looking for? Yep. So you guys usually draw up those off and on or work on that art for 
Um, it's usually prepared the minute the person shows up, at least. By the time their appointment comes, like if you've set up an appointment for me uh, a, a month ago to do a sleeve for you. Yeah. Uh, when your appointment's coming up, I've worked a little along on that sleeve the whole time, but I like to really put the fine touches on it and stuff as close to the day or two before your appointment as I can. So it's fresh in my head. It's fresh in my memory, muscle, muscle memory. Uh, it's not in cobwebs like, oh, I yeah. drew that like eight weeks ago. What was I thinking when I drew it? Like, you know, I yeah. want it to be fresh. I want it to be as, as, as intuitive and as good as I can make it and present it to you as I possibly can. And the other thing to keep in mind is that the artists, I know just basically knowing you guys, being around you guys so much, there were 10 tattoos that they have done, designed, and at least between, yeah, between the week that you've been here and the week you come back or no, however yeah. long. So right. <clears throat> it's not that they're drawing that whole single time. They are drawing other stuff and then working up to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything has to be done you know, in order. And right. Back stuff. in the day, some people would do that. They'd come in, make a consult, make an appointment. Uh okay, your time is two months from now on this day, blah, blah, blah. And they'll come in two or three days later. So, like, have you got a sketch for me to look at yet? Like, right, no, yeah. dude, I haven't even filed that up in my, my banks to even look at yet, If I even if I sketched a little something. It's not anywhere close for you to take a look at it, first off, because you're not going to understand what you're looking at. It's not developed that far. Um, and I don't want to, you know, seem like I'm not attentive to your request, but like you were just saying, I've finished drawing, prepared, executed 15 tattoos on people you know, just in a couple of days that it's been since we've talked, much less you've still got another month and a half before we ever get to your turn. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, calm down. Right. It'll get, it'll be done. And another thing I, I think we should need, need to bring up with the consultation, because I don't think a lot of people are really aware of this. And it's a common thing that my buddy designed this tattoo for me and they'll bring it in and they want it exactly like that. And the problem is, is their buddy it might be a fabulous artist, maybe one of the, just incredible, right. fine artist, what have you. They don't understand the techniques or the method of tattooing. And to that translate has it into to be a translated tattoo. into tattooing. And that's a big trust issue, I think, with a lot of people. They don't well, yeah. get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, just because you can do, uh, you know, a beautiful painting of a girl's face and you want it duplicated on you, well, there's a certain way that I have to execute it to make, to achieve that. Yeah. You know, so when I start drawing it or making it into a way for me to do that, you can't start, well, that's not how they did it. Like, it, I, I'm not making a painting. I'm making a tattoo. So that's how it has to be done. Yeah. Just you know? like if you had an airbrushing on a car, it's not going to look the same as an oil painting is with all the stroke. No, it's, it's totally job. different medium, totally different art. Yes. And I think know? a lot of people don't understand that. They think, oh, yeah, yeah artists, they can only do everything. No. Nope. Nope. Yeah, not quite. I'm working on it, though. I'm trying, but, you know. Yeah. Yep. You know, you got sculptors, you got painters, you got, you know, musicians, you got poets, you got people that are, you know, artistic with words and thought and all this creative stuff going on. But that doesn't mean that each one of them can do what the other one's doing. No. By any means. Go yeah. to the art museum sometime. Just walk around and look at paintings. Yeah. I bet you won't find hardly any in there that are exactly alike. <laughs> nope. Not from different artists. That wouldn't be any fun, would it? No, it would be boring. Well, it would be rather boring. Mm-hmm. Be like exactly. The, it'd be like being in an Andy Warhol. Uh, showing anyway, I, I probably just insulted a bunch of people, but anyway, I, I have go, gone. Dave. What's new? I have gone to an Andy Warhol exhibit where it was literally like every single thing was a print in there, which is great. That was his thing and everything else. Yeah, which is fine if you're into that. But yeah, it got kind of boring very quickly. It's like, oh yeah, there's another one. Yep, there's another one. Oh, this one's blue. Oh, well, this one's orange. Yeah, that's what I feel like when I listen to punk music. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> That's what I think about when I think. Oh, we've. Uh, we, uh, that's You're varying. When I think about metal. We you know, lost camera like, oh. one. Yeah, we did a while ago. All right. Anyway, I think we've well, beaten this one hot. pretty well to death. Yeah. Uh, thank warm. you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you liked it. Also, share with everybody you know that might be interested. Um, it's good to share. We learned that in kindergarten or preschool, depending on who you were raised or by. Or you get in trouble in detention. Yeah, you know, and then you go to time out yep. and you Standard feel shame. <laughs> if you have any questions that you'd like to hear us discuss or talk about, please don't be shy. Yep. Yeah, let let us know. know. Uh, we're always looking for ideas for uh, things we can talk about that you suckers are interested in. And yeah, so let us know. And there is an email address listed in the comments that you can or you can do that. Um, otherwise, you can always comment, or not the comments, the description. 
Otherwise, you can comment on the YouTube uh, page, too. Um, I generally check those, though I'm kind of a little bit behind. I, yeah. I've been busy, boys and girls. And Excuses. And, and them, <laughs> all you purrs out there. But. Anyway, um, if you like merch, you like swag, you like, uh, I don't know, beach towels, check out our merch Bowl store. Covers? Pillowcases? Pillowcases. Underwear. I don't know if there's pillowcases. Do we have our own underoos yet? No. Damn. I thought about that. Nah, Stretch anyway. That'd be awesome. Check out our merch store. Link is in the description. Also, um, on YouTube, there's one of those merch bars. Uh, Tell next time, who's hoping all your tattoos and piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, we hope to see if your body piercing and tattooing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks, guys.